Hmm, small church sound tips. Let's see what we get. Okay, col collaborate and worship. Wait, have I seen this guy before? Cade Young. Let's search Cade Young also. No way. So it's hard to believe that one of my favorite YouTubers, he lives in the same town as me. And so I thought, why don't I just go over and get some expert advice from the main man at Collaborate Worship. So What's here up? they are. <laughs> hey, the brothers, the dyna dynamic duo. Yeah, man, I'm here to straighten you out. So yes. glad you're here. <laughs> All right, so Cade and Dylan. Cade is kind of like the audio guru, mm -hmm. right? And Dylan, you're focusing on more like production stuff, right? Okay, so we're gonna go right through those doors over there and we're gonna check out their setup and he's gonna talk to me and help me figure out like the best way to make a smaller space sound good. Because y'all's space is a little bit smaller than our space and we just opened up a new thing called the venue that is about the same size and I wanna make the most of it. So let's go check it out. All right, around the curtain, here we are at No Limits Church in Owasso, Oklahoma. Here we are. Home of Collaborate Worship. And uh, you guys, how big is this space? Tell me about this space. You Where are we at? Do you want exact dimensions? No. This, this room's like 30 <laughs> feet wide and 75 <laughs> feet long. Yeah. It holds about, you can pack 115 people in here, but I mean, that's a packed room. I think we're set up for about 85 okay. right here. Okay, so, all right. Yeah. I want you to help the people out there that are probably in the majority, people that are at a church this size, how do we make the most out of our audio? And how did you make this room sound so good? Because it sounds good, guys. Well, thank you. It all comes down to like, um, you have to get the foundation right first. And so if you have the budget for some sound panels and your room is having some echo issues, like start there. It's, it's always like, I always tell people start at the source because we always want to like run to the mixer. Like, what can we do with the mixer to fix mm. this problem? It's like, let's start with like how the room actually sounds without your PA running in it. So if you pan around, you can see we have a few sound panels in here. Yeah. We haven't always had these. These are pretty recent too. We installed them about three months ago because surprisingly this room sounded good without any sound panels. And I'm not really sure how that happened. I mean, there's so many things that go into what a room sounds like. When we moved in here, I'm like, it's going to be awful. We got concrete floors. Right. The room is a rectangle. And then I got in here and it's just like, Hardly anything. Right, that's crazy. And it must be because of the pitch of the roof, like it's kind of going up towards uh, the back. Okay. And we also, behind the stage is a sound absorbing curtain. You can't see it in the camera probably because it's all black. Um, but we paid like $5,000 for that curtain. Yeah. And r the reason I did that is because our drums, as you see, are uncaged, which is crazy, right? In a room this size. But we have that absorption behind the drums, so we don't really have a problem with it. Yeah. Yeah. So start at the source, treat your room, mm -hmm. And then EQ your room is e the next thing. Okay. Some people just plug in their PA and just like roll with it. But there's some frequencies in your room that are gonna reverberate more than other ones. Like they're just gonna stick out. And if you don't EQ the room, which is what you're doing is you're e putting EQ on the main mix to level out your room. Mm -hmm. So that when everything goes through it, like it's going through and giving you a more level response in the room. If you don't do that, you're gonna have problems with feedback. You're gonna be like, why does it sound like this? So EQ in your room is it's kind of like a pro tip because it's not exactly an easy thing to do, but I have a video on that where mm -hmm. I, I walk you through it. And once you do it a few times, it, it really actually does become pretty easy. All right, so if someone out there has a similar room that's just like a, a rectangle space, basically, mm -hmm. what kind of like speaker reinforcement would you recommend them kind of looking into? I mean, tell me about what you have in here and your thought process on that. It's all about finding what speakers fit your room. So in this room, you don't need like a crazy amount of like power behind your speakers, right? We always think the bigger, the better, but no, we have 12 inch speakers and, and Rylan heard it in here. It doesn't sound thin. It doesn't sound wimpy. I mean, it's just a big sound. Now we're probably running those things at about 80, 90% of their, what they can put out on a Sunday morning. Um, so we recently, I had to replace them because the previous ones got a little tired. Side note, we run this venue as an event center and not everybody understands how to run sound. And so they may, kind of push things past their limit. And that's really what happened. 
And uh, so they sounded tired, we replaced them, but we replaced them with the same thing. Those are still 12 inch speakers up there, but we do have this monstrous dual 18 inch JBL SRX yeah. 18 sub. Yeah, something I have noticed at smaller venues like this is the lack of subwoofers. Can you like explain, I, I see you've got some subs down there, your thoughts on adding subs in a space like this or a church this size? So yeah, when you're in a small room like this, you may think that you don't need subs, but you always need subs because your PA speakers, they're only producing, now they say that they'll produce down to what, like 70 <laughs> hertz or 50 hertz or something crazy like that. And they may put out a little bit of that, but they don't put out very much of it. They really thrive like 100 hertz and up. And so if you want that 100 hertz and below, which is all the frequencies that you're gonna feel that give you a lot of energy, you have to have a subwoofer. And it takes, it takes a lot of energy in that low range, a lot of power to get it where you want it. Now, we run it maybe not like every church wants it here. I mean, you can feel the kick drum whenever mm -hmm. in worship. Maybe you don't want it that way, but you want it to be full. So you may not need a dual 18 inch sub for a room this size if, if you're not running sound like we are, but you do need a subwoofer. Now we used to have two single 18 inches and they were on each side of the stage. And what's interesting is about a room like this is they were canceling each other out in certain parts of the room because of the positioning of the subs. So now we have a dual 18 inch sub over on one side of the room and it's a much more even frequency response, which kind of blows your mind because you think that this side of the room is going to get all the bass, but that's just not how those low frequencies work. All right, so we're on the stage now. We're going to talk about monitoring because it's a very important thing that you need to think about. Cade, talk to us about monitoring in a space like this. So it's definitely one of our keys to success here on why it sounds so good in this room is because we'd have no floor wedges. It's an empty stage. There's nothing flown. There is no sound on the stage other than the drums. Everybody's using the P16 personal mixers. They're kind of hidden behind this oh, I like that. little board here to That's clean fancy. up the stage a little bit. You'll yeah. see that everybody has one. These are for the vocals here. The keyboard has one, the drums have one, the guitars have one over there, but everybody's using in-ear monitors. And you're probably thinking, and I know this, this is a thought, well, my vocalists, my singers won't go to in-ear monitors. I've tried and they just won't do it. Um, I didn't give them a choice. I said, we're moving to in-ear monitors because it's a better sound for the congregation. That's why we're here. We're here to serve the congregation. So put those in-ears in and you'll get used to them. <laughs> and they did, they like them now. Okay, so the other big debate is live drums versus electronic drums. Mm. And you've got acoustic drums in this space right here. How are you managing that? I have a video on how to decrease the volume of your drums, but it all comes down to what sticks you're using and having a drummer that actually knows how to be controlled whenever they play. So we also have some stuff going on here like, Dylan, what are these called that you just recently got on the... Just some little dampening stuff here. Yeah, but this actually made out of leather. Oh, uh, yeah. It's yeah, interesting. I've seen those. Yep. But we have the, whatever you call you, these things. You're rocking the dream cymbals that are that dream bliss, which are kind of that lower volume, quick decay style cymbal. Yeah, we have some dampening going on on these too. Like, uh, yeah, you got it on the bell. Got it on the bell. And you'll see we have these round, whatever these are called, clear sound. Yeah, your shy baffle time yeah, baffles. kind of things. That's not really for the room. Like it's not because it was the cymbals were too loud in the room. It's because the cymbals were too loud in the vocal mics. Because as you can see, the vocals are really close to the drums. Mm -hmm. So they were having a hard time in their in ears. Like I'm getting too much cymbals. So that just kind of keeps it out of the vocal mics. Yeah. Okay. So talk to me about your miking situation on these drums. Yeah. So one common belief is in a small room like this, like why do you even need to mic the drums, right? Because right. it'd be plenty loud enough. Um, the reason we mic them is because you don't get that low end energy uh, from the drums unless you mic them. So we have a mic on all of them. We have a snare top and bottom and one on the toms and the kick drum is mic'd. And it's just to reinforce that, that low end energy. Do we need any more of the snap from the drum, snare drum? You know, sometimes, because we'll run it a little louder in here, but you need that option. I want a tom, drum, a tom that's like goo in the room and you like feel it in your chest. You're yeah. not gonna get that unless you actually have a mic on the tom drum. Exactly. Yep. Okay, sweet. Those are some great tips. And if they want to learn more about like how to do some of the stuff, some of the nitty gritty, tell them like where to go. You guys have a really cool course, right? Yeah, so I have a course called Church Sound Made Simple. Basically talks you through like how to take what the big churches are doing, simplify it and apply it to a small church in a way that's not gonna overwhelm your volunteers. Um, Cause that's important, right? Cause yes. you, your volunteers may or may not know how to mix and Church Sound Made Simple will take them from like a newbie to being confident behind the mixer and creating a great mix every time. Okay, sweet. Thanks, Cade. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, now for Dylan, the beardless brother. He's going to tell us all about this amazing LED wall. 
I saw your recent video on this thing, but it's, it's basically your workhorse for all your video content, right? That's true, yeah. It's pretty cool. So we did a partnership with worshipproductions.org, and so they offer uh, LED screens at a much more affordable price for churches. Like, that's kind of their clientele is churches. You're just feeding it from ProPresenter 7? Yeah, so ProPresenter 7 goes into our ATEM, and the ATEM sends it to the video walls processor. Yep, yep, that makes sense. And I think a lot of churches this size, they're using like big TVs maybe, or trying to figure out how to do projection. Like, how realistic is doing something like this? Because it looks amazing in this space. I mean, it really just depends on your budget. I think it kind of helps us out a lot that we run this as an event center, like Cade said, so mm -hmm. we have a little bit more to work with. And then we also, you know, we did that partnership with Worship Productions, so they gave us a deal on it. So it honestly just comes down to what fits in your budget. I mean, you can make projectors look pretty good for less money than we bought that for. But we just, we had a lot of other issues with projection, like it was shaking, it was swaying with the building when mm -hmm. on a really windy day. Um, and we just, we had the budget to go for that at the price that it was at, and it just, it got rid of a lot of problems for us, so. And even in a small space like this, you guys have a confidence monitor, instead of like running iPads on stage for mm -hmm. lyrics, how are you feeding that? So that's just another unique display from the iMac, running okay. from ProPresenter. Cool, and it's just doing a stage display from Pro, Pro 7. Yep. So it was just an extra TV we had sitting around, and we had a guy make the mount for it, and there it is. Sweet. All right, guys, so I hope that was helpful for you. If you're in a smaller space like these guys are, they have made the most of it. If you have any questions about their setup here, you can ask in the comments on this video or just head over, head over to Collaborate Worship's YouTube channel. Right, guys? Yep. All right. Remember, we can do a lot of great things. Let's do it all for God's glory. See you in the next one.